so my name is Camilla. Thank you for inviting me. Really been looking forward to this. I come from Odense, Center for Liver Research. And uh, as you know, I'm the devil's advocate today. So which one do I push in the middle? Not the big one, okay. So why do we even have this discussion today? Everybody knows here that the diet has huge potential in improving NAFLD, type 2 diabetes, obesity. However, we really face some barriers. We talked about it yesterday. We do not know how to implement this in a successful way. So some of the barriers as motivation, we talked about it yesterday. It's very difficult to motivate particip like, like participants, our patients, and to be motivated ourselves because we've tried it for many years and we did not see the results we were hoping for. So what is the solution to this? I do not have it, but I know that we should not kill the motivation. So let's go. I have one disclosure. So um, I, I discussed this presentation with a vegetarian um, and she said that uh, she looked very pale on this picture and you guys would think she had anemia <laughs> uh, but she doesn't have that okay so let's go <clears throat> so my argument today is why even avoid meat it's often higher in carbohydrates is it even superior micronutrient deficiency and adherence so let's go so shira already told you very beautifully she'd done this study red and processed meat is associated to nafld and insulin resistance we do not want to eat that okay you really made it clear um, but what about poultry and fish so this is just to show you a quick overview of the components and i just want to highlight that um, fish especially is very high in in mono and polyunsaturated fat sources and especially essential vitamins and minerals. So of course all of these three meat sources is very high in protein and if you are a vegetarian you do not eat any of these so it's of course lower in protein. However this study um, very nicely done three months study comparing a high protein diet compared to a control diet, I just want to highlight that the high protein diet resulted in lower liver fat. So this was a cool trial where they provided all the foods to the participants for three months. Okay, so do vegetarians like protein? No, they don't. They can eat their protein from these sources, especially from dairy and from eggs and legumes. But most of the legumes are high in carbohydrates. So vegetarians will have a higher carbohydrate intake. And um, this leads me to the next point. So we did a study in my unit, a randomized control trial, looking at a low carbohydrate, high fat diet, compared it to the opposite, a very high carbohydrate or like a high carbohydrate and a low fat diet. So let's look into it. This is just an overview to, to show you it's a six month intervention. We did dual biopsies and we had a follow up visit. So when we were done, we told them, go home, live your lives, come back in three months and we'll see how you do. Okay, so both diets were calorie unrestricted. They had to eat until they were full. And this is just to show you what we recommended. You see the big difference in fat and carbohydrate intake between the interventions. So this was what they were actually eating throughout the six months. Uh, the low carb, high fat diet were eating more than 60 energy percentage of fat. It was incredible. And uh, 13 energy percentage of carbohydrates. And you see the difference between our interventions here. So we showed that the low carb, high fat diet improved HbA1c and weight more compared to the low fat, high carbohydrate diet. And looking at liver biopsies, uh, looking at more than two points improvements in, in NAS, we saw no difference. However, in looking at one point difference, we saw that the low carb, high fat diet improved, more people improved uh, in the NAS and only 1% worsened compared to 17% were eating higher carbohydrates amounts. 
Okay, so um, this is a very nice study, one of my favorites. It's uh, a meta-analysis looking at 50 different trials, dose response of carbohydrate intake. You see in the low bottom what happens when you reduce your carbohydrate intake, and you can see when you reduce it, you reduce HbA1c, body weight, blood pressure, triglycerides, and your HDL increases. So this is just to highlight that maybe uh, it's not good to increase your carbohydrates, maybe we should try to to avoid them okay so is a vegetarian diet even superior let's look at it i found actually one randomized control trial looking with the endpoint of nafl d they their endpoint was alt and asd and conventional ultrasound so we can discuss that however they um, randomized 75 participants with overweight uh, into either vegetarian diet or a standard diet what they were calling it and i could not find what they were, you know, um, saying to these patients on the standard diet. So, but let's see. So the they showed that the vegetarian diet improved ALT and AST. Nice. It improved weight and BMI. Okay. And it actually vegetarians improved um, steatosis on conventional ultrasound more compared to the standard diet. But is this like the vegetarian diet itself? Or let's see. What did they eat? So this just shows you that the controlled diet, we're eating more calories, more carbohydrates, more saturated fats. So the controlled diet, we're eating unhealthy. So I do not really trust this study. I'm not convinced that it is the vegetarian diet that, that showed these improvements. However, I found, I broadened my search, I found this, state-of-the-art randomized control trial. It's not on NAFLD, however, on metabolic um, outcomes. It's a crossover trial, three months. Participants were eating both three months vegetarian and three months Mediterranean diet. Outcomes, weight, BMI, and fat mass. They were eating the same amount of calories throughout the trial. This is just to show you. We see a difference in protein intake, which we would have anticipated. So let's go. This is the outcomes. So both diets improve BMI, body weight, fat mass. However, the vegetarian diet was not superior. So uh, I'm just going to break it down to you here. Let's look at uh, the biochemical parameters. So um, let's see. So the vegetarian diet, they decreased their red blood cell count hematocrit and vitamin B compared to the Mediterranean diet. And these um, like they, they go together because if you lack B vitamin, you will have difficulties in the formation of red blood cells. And this is why patients can get anemia. Um, so this is just to show you uh, AST and ALT. We saw no difference here between diet groups. However, the vegetarian diet did decrease or improve LDL compared to the Mediterranean diet. However, triglycerides increased. So a little weird. Um, okay, so this leads me to my next point, micronutrient de deficiency. So uh, these are just like the four major uh, components we need to be aware of, um, especially vitamin B12. It can lead to uh, weakness, anemia symptoms, uh, people feeling tired and uh, neuro neurological symptoms. They can feel depressed and have difficulties in concentrating and stuff like that. So it's very important to be focused on this. And this study showed that 50% of vegetarians actually lack B12. So it's, it's really a thing. Um, okay, so adherence. I'm just going to repeat this uh, to show you. We all know it, right? We need to adhere. Now we have a graph showing it. <laughs> so the follow-up visit I talked to you about um, um, before, you see here that if you do not adhere, your results will approach the baseline levels or, yeah. Uh, okay, so in our study, we saw that food on the go was a problem and social gatherings. So when people have to say, I'm a vegetarian, you know, I, I cannot have, eat. You know, it, people that do not, they don't like that. Many people do not want the attention, you know? So, so it can be difficult. You need to put yourself out there and be a vegetarian, and it can be difficult for, for people. Um, and this study uh, on your right just showed you, it was from the NAN study, um, asking self 
identified vegetarians, how they were eating. 50% still were eating some kind of meat, so they might, they, they might have been flexitarians. But it's just to, to underline that adherence can be difficult on this diet. Okay, so what do we do? Should we recommend this diet? So I would say for everybody, I don't think we should. Uh, we have, of course, a lot of pros, uh, but we also have the cons that I, uh, that I touched base on. Um, but the most important, we do not want to kill the motivation, okay? So if a patient comes to you and they say, I want to go vegetarian, you say, let's do it. So we, of course, have to support it. It can lead to amazing results, but we have to be conscious. We need to advise to eat dairy products because you can get your vitamin B from there. You need to advise them to eat supplements, measure B12, um, vitamin D and ferritin, and of course, help adherence. And adherence, we taught, touched based upon it yesterday, is so difficult. Um, so what do we know? This was just two reviews looking at different interventions um, so this was very nicely done. So this was actually only interventions like they had to eat randomized control trials. They had to eat the same diet. One group were like having some kind of intervention and one were not. Okay. So this is only on inter like adherence and which intervention works. And these were found to work. You can uh, maybe try to schedule a phone call with your patients two weeks ahead, try some of it in your practice, but we don't, of course, have anything, uh, a practical guideline yet. Okay, so to, to my conclusion, so the vegetarian diet is not superior to the Mediterranean diet. Uh, the vegetarian diet can improve metabolic markers, but we need to pay attention to micronutrient deficiency on a vegetarian diet. So that was it. <laughs>